Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thought we'd take a quick break here before we get started of back to work doing yeah. repairs and jobs on the house that we've been putting yeah. off for company's a while. Been, company's coming today, so we're going to have some chili. Hey, Julian, remember what that was like? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bro. Wow. Um, it's, it's really amazing to Kim and I how many XJWs are finding the courage to get in front of this camera and tell their experiences inside of Watchtower because it does mm -hmm. nothing but destroy Watchtower brick by brick, person by person, experience by experience. Well, it seems like, I mean, it just reeks of desperation at this point, you know, yeah. the convention. And I wanted to mention, too, that we watched Gilbert Gonzalez's, you know, best 2016 convention ever. That was great. We recommend watching that. And pause it and look at how empty the stadium is. Well, and also keep in mind that this is San Diego. There's a high concentration of Spanish people there. And for a Spanish assembly, I was really amazed at how empty this stadium was. Even where the Jehovah's Witnesses were sitting in one area, it was still... They, they were still sparse. I mean, my goodness. And honestly, doesn't Watchtower say that the largest amount of their growth is coming from the um, foreign Fourth. language speaking? And it's like, you, you look at this convention site and it's like, oh my goodness. You know, I, I remember a day when Watchtower had no problem filling an arena like that. Well, it's interesting because I went to JW.org this morning and I clicked on About Us and clicked on conventions and I wrote or you know typed in Spanish San Diego to see how many conventions were in you know San Diego there is no more up till August 31st so if that was the only one wow. oh my goodness yeah wow it was interesting is because when I was a kid in the early 70s um, it had to be between 72 and 75 because my little brother Scott was a baby but my little brother Mark was not born yet. so And I remember it being an international convention there in San Diego. And I can remember a stadium like that being packed. Oh, yeah. Wall it to wall. It was packed. There must have been, you know, like 80,000 to 100,000 people. It was yeah. just, you know. And then to see this, I mean, I was doing the happy dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But awesome video. Yes. Um, so, friends, keep up the exposure. We're definitely having an effect against Watchtower. We've got some things that we want to talk about, some experiences we want to share. But before we get into that, I want to I want to make a couple of comments from just personal observations. And I don't mean any disrespect to anybody because anybody is absolutely free to feel and view things they, they want to feel and view. These are just my personal feelings and how I view things. As an ex-Jehovah's Witness, I have come to the conclusion that when it comes to dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, there are no good, honest-hearted Jehovah's Witnesses. The good, honest-hearted ones are waking up and leaving. We have a couple of experiences that we want to share to kind of base what I'm saying this on. A couple of experiences that were, one of them we grabbed off of um, Recovery Group 3, and the other one was from my good friend Atlantis. It's not until these Jehovah's Witnesses wake up that, to quote fairy tale, they have to have their personal Armageddon. Until then, we're going to show you exactly what you're dealing with. Okay, But before we do that, I want to read Paul's words to the Ephesians. Chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 17, so I can, I really want to focus on verse 19, but I kind of want to put this in context because it all fits. So as Jehovah's Witnesses, as I read these questions, put yourself in the place as if Paul was specifically talking to you, and then listen to these experiences that we're going to read. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This, therefore, I say and bear witness to in the Lord, that you no longer go on walking just as the nations 
also walk in the unprofitableness of their minds. Think about that. The unprofitableness of their minds. While they are in darkness mentally and alienated from the life that belongs to God. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the insensibility of their hearts. Now before I read verse 19, think about what Paul is saying here. While they are in darkness mentally. Now Jehovah's Witnesses, you all think that you've been spiritually enlightened. You all think that you have this grandiose question of where life began. Who are we? Why are we here? You think Watchtower has got you believing that you've got all of this figured out. I'm going to challenge that. Okay? See, because Paul says because of the ignorance. We're going to expose your ignorance. I was ignorant to what Watchtower was doing to me mentally. They were really they were really working my mind so that my mind was unprofitable. When you shut down critical thinking, there your your mind doesn't benefit you whatsoever. Your mind now becomes mentally bankrupt. And unprofitable. <laughs> exactly. See unprofitableness mentally. Okay, but the mind has an absolute connection to the heart. And in all honesty, your heart should be overtaking your mental thoughts because what's in your heart? See, what, what did the scripture say that God reads? Does God read the minds? No, he really reads what's in the heart, doesn't he? So your mind can say, well, you know, the apostates are saying this, the apostates are saying that, the apostates are doing this. But if you don't stop and think about what the apostates are doing and get that thought down into your heart, you become unprofitable. Now, verse 19. Having come to be past all moral sense. They give themselves over to loose conduct. Now, in this, in this category, loose conduct doesn't always necessarily have to be fornication or adultery or loose conduct, things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that because we're going to show something where they are loose conduct when it comes to lying. Well, I believe in they have changed it now, and even in the elders' book, it's called brazen. Well, yeah, that's in But lying Timothy. is under it. Yeah. Okay, having come past to be all moral sense, they, give, they gave themselves over to loose conduct to work uncleanness of every sort. Uncleanness of every sort with greediness. So, uncleanness of every sort would also include knowingly lying to your fellow man. And this is where the experiences are going to come in. Oh, yeah. So, the first experience, um, you want to read those, Kim? From the, sure. The, now, this is what we pulled off recovery group three. We want to thank the ex-witness that posted this because this is really the basis of of who and what you are dealing with until Jehovah's Witnesses wake up and become sensible with their thought and with their heart. Well, our friend on Facebook, Anthony Morris, um, he's he's the one on X Recovery Group 3, and he came across this post and he sent it to us. And the person that posted this is Alan, so thank you, Alan, for posting this. So Alan posts that he was a bi at a huge biotechnology yeah. conference in San Francisco. Can't talk this morning. And some witnesses have had a cart set up outside the convention center every day this week. Today I was waiting for an Uber, had a few drinks, and decided to chat with them. I said I was a Mormon and I no longer agreed with the church and that this stance had caused my entire family to shun me. I then asked if they felt it was okay that someone lose their family just because they disagreed with their religion. Absolutely not was the response. Okay, now remember, they're coming to be past all moral sense. These people think nothing about lying to your face. They think nothing. It's, an, it's, it's so ingrained to these Jehovah's Witnesses to lie that they actually love it. They actually love lying. 
Well, even my mother that I thought was such a good person yeah. was caught in a lie. And her and my sister both have been lying to my little yeah. nephew that, you know, is a really bad, deep, dark family secret. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, shocking. Yeah. So you, as Jehovah's, back to Alan's conversation with them. So you, as Jehovah's Witnesses, would never shun someone just because they no longer agreed with your teachings? Again, absolutely not. They'll lie right to your face. After clarifying a few more ways, I explained I used to be a pioneer, served where the need was greater, etc., etc. I asked how they felt having to lie in order to present an acceptable face for their religion. They then tried to say that it depends on the circumstances, etc. So, so now they're backpedaling, and now they're coming up with an excuse for lying. Now, wait a minute. Have you eaten from the fruit of the tree that I told you not to eat? But it was that woman you gave me. Oh, but it was the snake. It deceived me. Jehovah's Witnesses, this is in your hearts. You have come to be past all moral sense when you can sit there and lie face to face with another human being and then when you get caught then you backpedal okay back to Alan's conversation I kept focusing on the fact that they lied to me they said well you can't say everything at first to which I responded what association does light have with darkness so finally I asked if it was okay that my family had no association with me because I simply didn't agree with their teachings the woman at the cart responded they are free to do as they want I asked the man if he was an elder he was I then asked if within the shepherd the flock of God it teaches that if someone continually associates with a disfellowshipped one whether or not that's potential grounds for disfellowshipping, he was forced to say it was. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, so they knowingly lied. They knew they were telling a lie and when they, they said, no, absolutely not. And then when he exposes tell, himself. And then find out he's an elder. He's an elder. And this is an elder's wife. These people will knowingly lie to you. That's why I don't believe there is a good Jehovah Witness until they have their personal Armageddon and get out of this organization. So I turned to the sister and asked, where's the free will? How can they decide if they want to associate with me if the consequences are so severe? She tried to say it was a personal choice, but I asked if they had attended the convention. They both had. Had they seen the video about remaining loyal to Jehovah? Of course they had. So again I asked, how can you lie and say it's a personal choice when they are instructing you to not associate with those who have left? The sister then said something I will never forget as long as I live. She said, I can see why you were disfellowshipped. Wow. Why is that? I asked. Because you're argumentative. Since when is that a disfellowshipping offense? See, they've become past all, what they can no longer distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. <coughs> and they have to deflect it back on yeah, that's the exactly ex right. member. Yeah. So you feel my disagreeing with something the governing body says is grounds to make an announcement telling everyone I've ever known or cared about not to associate with me is justifiable? She responded, <laughs> yes. At that point, I extended my hand to the man, thanked him for talking to me. Reluctantly, he shook it and again tried to justify how he couldn't immediately be honest about shunning. So he admitted that he knew he was going to lie when that question is... He Read that again, how he couldn't immediately be honest. Again tried to justify how he couldn't immediately be honest about shunning. I once again pointed out light has no association with darkness and left. Yeah. This is the first time I've spoken with witnesses in the two and a half years since I left. I didn't think it would affect me as much as it did. I was nervous afterwards, which is very uncharacteristic for me. But I'm glad I spoke with them and I'll keep doing it. This Good. is why this conversation, and thank you, Alan, for posting this on Facebook to a support group, because this shows 
how bad you know the witnesses have yeah. gotten and how desperate i mean still this reeks of desperation so just let me reread these scriptures just real quick well let me finish my okay. thought so this is what i thought of so when you study and get baptized there's no fine print in the organization book before you get baptized so they are making you get baptized under a verbal contract without full disclosure this in this country is fraud it's fraud yeah there should be a disclaimer in the organization book with all the fine print about this yeah <coughs> so again jehovah's witnesses paul's writing directly to you as if he was writing to the ephesians this therefore i say and bear witness to in the lord that you no longer go on walking just as the nations also walk in the unprofitableness of their minds. How does it profit you or the organization when you can stand there and lie to the person in front of you who now has exposed that he's a Jehovah's Witness and these things are getting uploaded to YouTube? How does that profit you? All that does is destroy you. That's all that does. Okay? while they are in darkness mentally when you knowingly lie as this elder said he knowingly lied you're in darkness mentally satan has now become your father and your leader and this sinks from their mind into their hearts and they uh and annihilated from the life that belongs to god because of the ignorance that is in them because of the insensibility of their hearts having come to be past all moral sense and gave themselves over to loose conduct to work uncleanness of every sort and that uncleanness is the lie now we have another one from Atlantis oh, right got a whole bunch here but our dear friend Atlantis um, I had sent him this particular, you know, experience from Facebook, and he wrote back and he said, that was a good experience. On a little table just behind my front door, I used to keep the Bible in living English hidden inside a cardboard folder. And, oh, yes, I did find out who had given me the uh, Jehovah's Blunder. It was him. It was in yeah. the beast. So apologize about that but uh, about eight years ago two elders showed up at my door and I allowed them to give their presentation one of the elders recognized me from the old days after they were through with their presentation I asked them if I should have anything to do with an organization or literature that said that the name Jehovah was a blunder of course they said that I should have nothing to do with an organization or literature making those statements that's when I pulled out the folder with their Bible inside of it and read page 7, which stated that the name Jehovah was a blunder. They could not see the Bible in the folder and said that what I was reading was demonic. That is when I said, I'm sure glad you told me that because it is your Bible that I'm reading from, and pulled their Bible out of the folder and showed them page 7. Both of them turned three shades of green, and I have never had another JW caller. About three years ago, a carload of JWs parked their car across the street to go from house to house, but they avoided my house like the plague. So let's just reiterate. This is the Bible that we're talking about, Jehovah's Witnesses. Page 7, the well, preface. Let's, let's open it up first. This is Byington's translation. Oh, and someone did tell me that if you get the old JW.org online library, they do have a scan of this Living English Bible, and it does have the preface. Cool. Copyright, 1972. Watchtown Bible, Bible Tract Society. Turn over to page 7. And you read Byington's words, As to the Old Testament name of God, certainly the spelling and the pronunciation Jehovah were originally a blunder. <laughs> Which, right, right there, Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses, this name Jehovah that you pray to, that you do all of your lying in the name of Jehovah, is an absolute blunder. So who do you really represent? Who do you really follow? You've got Jehovah's Witnesses that'll admit that they'll they'll lie to you. Say, I couldn't be honest at first. Then that means you're a liar. 
Well, then that means you don't have the truth. You don't have the if truth. If you have to lie about your religion and your doctrines and your stance and your rules and stuff, then you do not have the truth. That's right. And along those thoughts, um, I found this in the Beast also. January 1st, 1940, Watchtower, page 7, under the subheading, Who Saves? Those who practice religion rely upon their religious organization to provide them protection and salvation. Such are doomed to complete disappointment, and their end is destruction. <laughs> Those of the evil servant class are also religionists who rely upon their own ability to develop character that will ensure them the protection and salvation from Jehovah God. They too will be sorely disappointed. The evil servant class often deceive themselves to the point of advocating universal salvation, falsely claiming that the love of God provides salvation for the devil himself, and this they do in the face of God's plain declaration, all the wicked will God destroy. Now, isn't it funny? <laughs> isn't it funny that in light of what we just read, and the bunker videos. And the bunker videos. Such are doomed to complete disappointment. And their end is destruction. Jehovah's Witnesses, you know as well as I do, that you preach and teach, unless you come to Jehovah's organization for salvation, you can't hope, you can't possibly hope to escape the destruction of this system. See, these are characteristics of the evil slave class, the evil servant, as they wrote right here. See, who rely on their own ability to develop character <laughs> that will ensure them the protection and salvation from Jehovah God. What character have you developed that is now being widely exposed in the YouTube community? The character that you are liars. That's the character. That's the nature of who you people are. Go ahead. I dare any any Jehovah Witness to prove me wrong because we've got it all in writing and we've even got some in video. We've you can't got testimonies. argue. You I can't mean, argue it. Yeah. Your, your, your argument is baseless any, anymore. It's, it, you're just done. Yep. So I have some more here. Um, like I've mentioned before, I'm actually transferring files from the beast onto an external drive, you know, for a cyber safe deposit box that someone is designing and this is from the salvation book and uh, it's interesting because this says a textbook for the Jonadabs yeah the Jonadabs yeah by J.F. Rutherford copyright 1939 we're gonna go to page 216 the last paragraph at the bottom and it's talking about the prophetic picture of Job, how he represents the faithful followers of Christ Jesus, and the covering ransom is found in the advocacy of Christ Jesus, who is called in this scripture the messenger or interpreter. Okay, this is when it gets interesting. In the year 1918, the anti-typical Job class, the faithful followers of Christ Jesus, whom Job, Job represented, were in great distress because of oppression heaped upon them by the enemy. In that year, the Lord Jesus came to the temple of Jehovah God. The Holy Spirit that had been the guide of God's people, having performed its functions, was taken away. <laughs> Oops. Oops. So since so, 1918, who's been guiding Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. if it has not been the Holy Spirit? They claim Jesus Christ, but when did Jesus Christ have a lie face to face to anybody? Okay, so it was taken away, and the Lord Jesus himself, being present, represented his people and advocated in their behalf before Jehovah God, that is, in behalf of those who had fallen into distress because of their failure to properly use their lips in proclaiming the truth. Okay, so the Holy Spirit was taken away from your organization. <laughs> so what is, like Mike said, what is guiding you now? And if the Lord Jesus Christ is represented represented this Job class of this time period, then why, in later times, 
is Jesus not the mediator for all mankind? The Job class. Or the great crowd or the Job class. He is only the mediator for the 144,000. Well, then, well, honestly, by extension, by what we just read in those two experiences, Jesus Christ is leading you people with a lie, isn't he? There's your contradiction. See, you should be able to think that through. You should be able to now make the unprofitableness of your mind begin to become profitable because you because you know there's no falsehood found in the mouth of Christ. But yet, when you read what Watchtower writes in your conduct today, you see that you are absolutely making a liar out of what you deem as the truth. So if Rutherford said the Holy Spirit was taken away from the organization... <laughs> Whose, whose spirit are you operating under? Because in that 1914 talk that Splain gave about the overlapping generations and trying to explain it mm -hmm. with his little chart and stuff, he put Rutherford as of the faithful and discreet slave of that class. Right, he did. So that means that Rutherford, so was he lying about the Holy Spirit being taken away? Makes you wonder. That's right. Um, something else, too, I wanted to mention... Um, like I said in the last video, I believe, that Atlanta sent us a box of books that we just absolutely love and just been going over these like crazy. You know, Mike's been going over the Johannes Grieber book. Well, I found one. <coughs> now, this is the creation book. Copyright, 1927, by J.F. Rutherford. Yes, this is the Watchtower and Bible track. Society book. Now I've seen this picture when we first came out in 2012 and I thought it was only in the European editions. So you open up to page 265 and guess what is in there? Naked men and it looks like there's some kind of gay thing going yeah, on look here. At, yeah, look at what's going on right now. It's interesting that all of these people are clothed and these two men right here are naked and they're doing something that is irreprehensible. Why would Rutherford... Well, wait a minute. I'll tell you why. Because as he already stated, the Holy Spirit had left. So now they're throwing all of this on the shoulders of Christ. Think about it, Jehovah's Witnesses. Would Christ really approve of something like this in a book that he would be backing well not only that 1927 it shows them on crosses yeah and it appears that the ones hanging on the crosses are naked also including christ yeah so which would mean that if these men are naked then these men are due to be executed and are they getting one little last whoopee before they get executed and or if that's the case then why aren't the roman guards there to see that they don't run off from their execution well, the thing is, is, you know, I don't want to judge gay people. No, not at all. But I think, you know, this is totally inappropriate for Watchtower, the clean organization, because if they printed something like this in a book today, oh my goodness, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to say that I had posted this on Facebook. You know, this was an actual scan that I had done yeah. right from this book. And I had so many comments and PMs this morning saying, oh my God, is that re is this for real? Is this really a Watchtower book? And so I have been sending everybody the actual PDF scan of this book, but it's the 1927 creation book. And yes, it is published by Watchtower Bible Tract Society, or excuse me, at that time it was the International Bible right. Students. And well, it was written by J.F. Rutherford. Which now brings up a very good point from the perspective of activism. There are so many people coming out of Watchtower that not everybody has the time to be able to sit down and do this in-depth investigating. So for those that think, well, I don't want to do a video on this because it's already been covered, don't think that way. Just because you think it's been covered doesn't mean that everybody is going to locate it and find it. That's why Kim and I decided to re-show this picture because the response we got off of our Facebook group is like, oh my God, did Watchtower really do, do this? These people had no idea that Watchtower had done such a disgusting thing. Now, 
if Kim and I had the mindset of saying, well, you know what, something like this is already up on JW Facts, let's not cover it. Not everybody goes to JW Facts. Not everybody goes to everybody's website. So that's why it's good every once in a while to bring these yeah. things right up to the fore again. Bump them to the top so that those coming out can now see just how disgusting this organization truly is. And the thing is, is so many of these messages, you know, and sometimes I forget that these are new ones coming out of the organization and they haven't had a chance to research and haven't had, right. you know, they haven't seen this stuff yet. So that's why we need to keep bringing it up, keep putting it on Facebook, keep putting it, you know, in these groups and forums and stuff, because we all know that when you post something, you know, this I had seen three years ago, it's way down yeah. at the bottom now, and who's going to scroll down to three years ago? So that's why you need to keep putting these at the top so that every, this new group coming out can see all of this stuff. And at the very least, at the very least, if you've never seen anything like this, and you're waking up and coming on a watchtower, this helps you to realize that you've absolutely made the right choice in getting away from this lying, disgusting, satanic, child abusing, family splitting up, shunning organization. But, you know, the biggest thing is we're not judging anybody, but the thing is, is how hypocritical. That's the point we want to remember. You know, this organization, this cult condemns gay people. You know, well, my little brother do. was gay. You know, most religions, they condemn gay people. But yet they have this picture in their literature that is so hypocritical. You know, how can you condemn someone who is gay and then put something like this in your book? But that goes right along with all of the subliminal imagery that Watchtower has littered their literature with. Yeah. Okay. So moving on, I have another one. This is Qualified to be Ministers. Now this uh, is the revised one, February 1st, 1967, page 156. Another one from The Beast. The first essential for study is the right condition of mind and heart. This is, <laughs> this is paragraph five. The right condition of mind, mind and, and heart. heart. How can they have the right mind and heart when they'll openly lie to your face? Oh, it gets better. <laughs> Appreciating that Jehovah grants understanding only to the meek and not to be stiff-necked. I'm sorry, but the witnesses that I've talked to over the past two, ten years are the most argumentative and stubborn, stiff-necked. Well, they, they, <laughs> they won't even look at their own literature because they become so afraid of it. They yeah. become so afraid that they won't even look at their own literature. <laughs> it gets better. If we have love for Jehovah and for the organization of his people, we shall not be suspicious, but shall, as the Bible says, believe all things. All the things that the watchtower brings out. <laughs> Inasmuch it has been faithful in giving us a knowledge of God's purposes and guiding us in the way of peace safety and truth from its inception to this present day haven't we been proving this wrong for the past three years absolutely absolutely been proved wrong so along those lines many of you know that i have well the spine is gone but this is <laughs> the old bond volume of the watchtower now this one is let's see where's the date to touch it. October 15, 1917, page 6158. At the top, under the subheading, Noticeable Features of the Convention, and they're talking about the convention. Ah, let's just see. Let's go to the first full paragraph. The seventh volume was enthusiastically received by most all who attended the various conventions, only here and there being an exception. So obviously, Studies in the Scripture, Volume 7, wasn't enthusiastically, enthusiastically accepted by all. Uh, let's see. At every convention, resolutions were adopted by almost a... Un I can't say that word. <laughs> 
And that, unanimous? Unanimous. There we go. Vote approving the present management of the Watch Our Bible Track Society and its officers, being <laughs> Rutherford and his boys club. Yeah, this was right after the hostile takeover. Yeah, this was right after that great schism. Pledging unreserved loyalty to the society. As an old soldier expressed it, a good soldier always follows his regimental flag. The Watch Iron Bible Tract Society is our flag. Is our flag. The Lord has used it all these years and continues to use it. And where He directs the work through it, we rejoice to follow. And they rejoice to lie. And follow Rutherford. And we just, you know, have been exposing for a couple of years now the hypocrisy of Rutherford. Yeah. And yet, you know, everybody's following him. Yeah. So let me... Are uh, you finished with everything? Well, I was going to bring up the okay, news. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bring that have... up, and then I want to get back to the convention for a minute. Yes. Now, this has been all over Facebook, forums, you name it, all over the place. And thank you, everybody, the vast apostasy army, for posting this everywhere. Um, we know that Russia, the Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia have been under ban. You know, even JW.org has had several videos and news, you know, items about this. We know the Witnesses appealed um, their ban and have been fighting it now for a couple of years. Well, this just came out. It is uh, the RAPSINews.com under Judicial News. And the RAPSI is the Russian Legal Information Agency. And under news, it says Russian Supreme Court bans Jehovah's Witnesses branch. And this is uh, June 6, 2016. Moscow, June 9th. Russia's Supreme Court on Thursday banned the Jehovah's Witnesses of Belgorod as extremist organization. RAPSI reports from the courtroom. In February 2016, the Belgorod Regional Court has granted a lawsuit lodged by prosecutors seeking liquidation of the Jehovah's Witnesses branch. The organization appealed the ruling. The Supreme Court thus upheld the lower court's decision. Jehovah's Witnesses have had many legal problems in Russia. In March 2015, a court in Tayumen fined the organization 50,000 rubles, $773, and seized prohibited literature. Now, it's interesting because on JW.org, they have a video where it appears to be showing someone planting literature in, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses' property. Yeah. And they're claiming that they're being framed. Mm-hmm. And yet, this court says they've seized, you know, all of this. Yeah. In January 2014, a court in Kurgan ruled to ban the organization's booklets as extremists. The books talk about how to have a happy life, what you can hope for, how to develop good relations with God, and what you should know about God and its meaning. Now, we know that even though the literature says this, what really happens behind the scenes yeah. if you disagree with anything. And Russia knows this. Yeah. In late December 2013, the leader of the sex group in Tobolsk, Siberia, was charged with extremism and the prevention of a blood transfusion that nearly led to the death of a female member of the group. In 2004, a court in Moscow dissolved and banned a Jehovah's Witnesses group on char charges of recruiting children encouraging believers to break from their families, inciting suicide, and preventing believers from accepting medical assistance. Jehovah's Witnesses is an international religious organization based in Brooklyn, New York. Now, we just want to point out that the Russian Supreme Court um, upheld that decision in uh, their literature, and they have been declared an extremist group. And uh, also it mentions Jehovah's Witnesses' website, books, declared extremists in Russia. 
and I think the Russian government is realizing how damaging this cult, this Western cult is, and I don't blame them a bit for wanting to get rid of them out of the country. I don't either. I'm done now, so you can continue with yours. Oh, that's okay. So here's the here's the conflict, Jehovah's Witnesses. This is where your theo your theology fails. See, when you go back to your district convention, and those that have not seen it yet, spoiler alert, there's a scene of the Great Tribulation being broken out, and you all know how this is going to play out. Watchtower's written a thousand articles about it. We've seen dramas. We've seen everything that has to do with the, your theology, that the governments will turn on Babylon the Great and destroy her. Wipe her out. Leave her naked, laying in the streets. Because she has committed all of these atrocities. And yet, at that point, Jehovah's Witnesses will still be organized. Jehovah's Witnesses will still be preaching. You know, of course, your message is going to change, obviously. It's not one of salvation, but it's one to doom and destruction. Well, that's the same message you preach today. No matter how much you try to convince yourself you're preaching or a message it. of life, you're actually preaching doom and destruction. I know. I was there. I get, And I bought the t-shirt. Here's the thing. You all think that your religion is going to be the last standing because of what you're portraying in your district conventions? Russia is showing that you people are the first to go. <laughs> because you're not a viable religion. You are a destructive cult. And these government officials recognize that. These government agents that work for the Russian government, that work for the Australian Royal Commission, the Goddard Commission, and any other government knows firsthand how destructive you people really are. How your shunning policies destroys what they're working to bring together a united human family. You are working against the government. Now, think about the video that you're going to watch of the mom whose daughter gets disfellowshipped. Watchtower plays that scene out as if you're being obedient to Jehovah by not answering the phone call from that daughter who got disfellowshipped. See, you view it as discipline from Jehovah. The world in Russia views it as being extremism. This is not how you treat your family members. Now, just remember, think about it like this. When that daughter's calling her mom, she's leaning up against the doorpost of a building, and the mom is not answering because she's thinking she's being faithful to Jehovah. Think about how the heart of that daughter is breaking. You moms, do you really want to break your child's heart when Watchtower says, oh, you got to be loyal to Jehovah. you got to be loyal to Jehovah. You gotta, this is discipline from Jehovah. Yes, they do. That's how that all plays <laughs> out. That's right. But now let's just tweak this a little bit. And for the lack of not having actors and a budget that doesn't allow me to recreate this scene, I'm going to have to build a scene in your mind. Let's just say that daughter, that disfellowship person is driving down the road, and let's just say a little rabbit runs across the road and that person swerves to avoid hitting the rabbit, runs off into the ditch and smacks a tree head on. Now this girl, this person has bumped their head against the windshield, bumped their head against the uh, steering wheel, and she's bleeding or they are bleeding profusely. What if that person is sensing their life slipping away? And the last thing they want to do is call mom and dad and tell them how much they love them. And you're ignoring the last few seconds of their, your child's life because you're being obedient to Jehovah. Think about that, Jehovah's Witnesses. Is it really worth 
sacrificing the last few minutes of your child's life while being obedient to Jehovah. Hello everybody. I want to break in here just for a minute. Um, we're having some copyright issues with a clip that we put at the end of this video. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to put the description um, down in the description. I am going to put a link to uh, that clip on Vimeo. And so you can go that and watch it before you go watch part two of this video. And I also put the link to the uh, Russian legal website. And so sorry about this, but for some reason YouTube just will not let us use this clip. I even recorded the movie scene off of my computer with my video camera and it still is trying to give us a copyright notice. So I don't understand what's going on, especially since I grabbed the clip from an individual's YouTube channel and they didn't have any problems. So anyway, sorry for the inconvenience. Um, like I said, I will put the link to the Vimeo clip down below and warning, it may not be suitable for young children because it does show a car accident and extreme shunning by parents. So thank you everyone and you have a great weekend.